Well, I'm here today with my sweet son, Ben, who's going to help me plant some of those vegetables that we grew from scraps in a previous video. And also, while you're here joining us, we're going to give you a little tour of my kitchen garden. Hi, Hi sweet, sweet friends! friends. <laughs> Welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, before we start planting the scraps, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this garden. This is my kitchen garden. And this spring, we decided to completely redo it. And having my son Ben here home with us made all of this possible because he built all these raised beds for me. I used to just have herbs here, but then I decided that I really wanted to start growing more vegetables in my kitchen garden. And my kitchen is kind of unique. We live in an old house and the kitchen juts out of the main part of the house. And so my kitchen garden kind of is a U, and this is the back part of it. So I've got a little more room here than I do on the other two sides. And so Ben was so sweet, he built all these raised beds for me. And in here, I've got 12 cherry tomato plants. And the reason they're cherry tomato is right now, um, well, I live in Central Texas and it's very hot here. And in the summer, I have found that I can only grow cherry tomatoes different times of the year I can grow you know if it's the early spring or in the fall I can grow the aromas which I really like um, you can even do beefsteak whatever you want but when it's real hot like this uh, the best that I can do in terms of having the tomatoes mature is just to get those little cherry tomatoes and that'll be basically uh, through this month July and August it can be very difficult pretty much to get anything to grow in a home garden but that said I also have um, what do I have? One, two, three, about four basil plants right here in the front because they just, you know, in terms of companion planting, they love to be with tomatoes. Then over here, Ben and I transplanted, um, this was part of my herb garden, but it was over in another area. This is Texas tarragon. Some of you may know this is Mexican marigold. And this is just fabulous. It's, it smells just like um, good quality French tarragon, which is very difficult for us to grow here in Central Texas. But this is just as good. And it creates a beautiful yellow bloom in the fall, which I'll definitely be able to share with you uh, when that comes around. Now, back behind Ben, Ben, now, now what's behind you that you've this known is, for a long this time? This plant is older than me. It's oregano, <laughs> so one of your favorites. Yeah, and, and we don't, you may be thinking, oh, it's funny because it's a low growing plant. You know, why do you kind of just have it shoved in the back there? Well, that's kind of where my oregano was originally planted, gosh, about 30 years ago. <laughs> and it, my oregano just does so well there. So we figured, well, we'll just let it live there. Now over here are all my pepper plants and they just do great here. But when I say pepper plants, I'm talking about hot pepper plants. I've got jalapenos, I've got serranos, I've got some uh, something new that I put in this year called dragon chilies. We'll see what that's all about. But I think, they're, I think it's a type of cayenne. Uh, but pepper plants are great. <laughs> I, technically, I guess they're annuals, but basically here, I have found over the years, they've become perennials. Oh, it sounds like a dog barking. <laughs> uh, and I'll just throw a sheet over them if, if we think we're gonna get a frost in the winter, and then come spring, they're growing up again and blooming, and it's just fantastic. So we've got some of the new ones. These have been, I've actually had these a couple of years. And then better point to some of the, um, I've got some of the other ones that he put in for me. And these are new pepper plants, but I'm confident they're gonna become, uh, they'll be with us for a long time. And then right in front of Ben is one of my favorite herbs. That's a lemon balm. And that I find does very well right there. And the reason is, uh, you know, again, our sun is so strong and so hot here that a lot of herbs that maybe where you live, like they'll say like full sun, here, pretty much nothing likes full sun come the summer. <laughs> 
and I have found that lemon balm does great just with the this is the this part of my house is east and the other that way is south and this will just get the east sun and I find for morning sun that's what the peppers like that's what the lemon balm likes and then right behind Ben he'll point it out to you that's kind of looking a little sad, but that, uh, I think it might have bolted, I'm not quite sure, but that was um, where I plant my Italian flat leaf parsley, but it's not really the time of year for it. It likes the cooler weather, but it also likes just the morning sun. I find that really uh, makes a difference for it. If I try to put it where it's got the southern exposure, it just doesn't do well. And then in the back, I'm doing something new. I've had this plant before, it's called Bee Balm, but I also found that it did not do well when it got the southern exposure. It too really seems to just like partial shade, a little bit of dappled sun, you know, nothing too dramatic in terms of our central Texas sun. And these have a beautiful flower that almost looks like a firework burst. They're, it's very pretty and it's like red and pink and white and different colors like that. And it really attracts bees and I love to attract bees. This is my upright rosemary. I have some prostrate rosemary in the front of the house. Um, I also have a garden in the front of my house, um, and, which is nice because we, um, it's, it's uh, a courtyard. And if you'll notice, you know, this part of our yard is fenced and the front courtyard uh, also is fenced and the reason is uh, where we live there are so many deer and I do have places where there are nice shrubs for them to enjoy because I like to share uh, but for those things that are for the family I do have to um, uh, make sure that they're fenced otherwise they'll be eaten to the quick <laughs> but that's my rosemary and it's doing beautiful rosemary loves it here in Central Texas so that is wonderful. And then over here, I have a little lemon verbena. It is coming back. It has really been struggling. Again, it doesn't really like too much strong sun. And I've learned that. And now I know that this will be a happier place for it. And if you, if you pan down a little, you'll see this lovely heart. I made this at a little... Uh, it's like an art band. Do you remember what was it like? A little yeah. arts and crafts. It was a little arts and crafts store. Thing. And I'll show you Ben's. We went together. Come this way. <laughs> we went together, Ben and I, when he was younger. And Ben had, in addition to all of the wonderful animals we had, <laughs> Benjamin also had toads. And he made this uh, cute stepping stone in honor of one of his toads. I think this one was for Chub Chub. Chub Chub, chub. and Medium <laughs> Chub. Yeah, we had two toads, Chub Chub and Special names. Medium Chub. So that's kind of fun. And then one other thing I want to show you that I'm very excited about is over here. Uh, this is my elderberry bush. And I'm trying it out here. Elderberry does grow here in Central Texas, but it likes to be near streams. Now we have a little pond on the other side of my kitchen garden, and I am going to try and maybe put some around that pond, but I'm very happy with how this is coming out. And then over here are my mints. And if you notice, my little signs just say mints because over the years, I don't know, we've got peppermint in here, spearmint, we've got some chocolate mint, and it's just a, a, a general mishmash of things, <laughs> but all wonderful mint. You'd always tell me, Mother, how it has to be contained. Yes, because yeah. the mint will go crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. The mint is the mint is very, very invasive, and we've tried uh, putting it in a pot, and then we've tried putting it in a pot, and then planting the pot. Remember, we did yeah. that the flower pot, but. Even that, the roots went down through the bottom and just took over the herb garden. So now we just uh, give the mint all the room it wants over here and we keep it contained. <laughs> now this is everything we're gonna be planting today. And if you saw the previous video, you're gonna be very, a lot of these are gonna look familiar to you. And if you haven't seen the previous video, no problem. I'll put a link in the iCards uh, and in the description below so you can go ahead and watch that but I'll just quickly go over 
what we've got here, this is thyme that I'm just rooting. Um, I, I'm not gonna plant this today. I wanna get let that get more roots, but we've got our carrot greens, we've got our bok choy, we've got our garlic, we've got our fennel, we've got our cabbage, we've got all this garlic, not garlic, what am I saying? All this ginger that we're gonna put in. I've got some lettuces, I've got an onion, I've got some beet greens growing off of this. I've got some celery here. I've got a leek <laughs> and I've got some green onion. And I've also got my cut potatoes with the eyes. And basically what you wanna do is just cut your potato in half and make sure it has at least two eyes on it and let it, I, I like to let them dry out a little before I plant them, but that's very easy to do. So this raised bed is the one that's farthest away from my kitchen. But what's great about this one is, if you'll see, there's uh, a live oak tree over us. Live oaks basically stay evergreen all year long. They lose their leaves right in the spring, but the new leaves are almost all already growing. So there's pretty much always some shade here with just a touch of dappled sun at the latter part of the day, but not too much. So I'm gonna technically, we wouldn't be trying to grow lettuce uh, here it's it's more of like a you know fall into winter crop um, but because I was doing this video to show you all how you can do different scraps and I know everybody lives in different areas uh, not only of the United States but of the world and so I figured I'd just do all these in one fell swoop and we'll just baby these along here in the shade during our hot summer months now I just want to mention um, about the raised beds that we're using um, we these came uh, already cut for us but then as i mentioned ben built them put them all together and we just ordered them i think it was from home depot and it was great because they're very reasonably priced and i'd like to hear what you what you thought about putting them together it was quite easy i just put them down put these first blocks down then i slipped the planks in and uh you don't even need to put your caps on with a drill because the beds held just fine and we put the dirt in and we put the caps on after. But I just then got a drill, put the caps on for a little aesthetic value. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they were very easy. Really took me all these, maybe, you know, a couple hours each no, or a couple hours to get them all done. Wasn't too bad. Wasn't too bad. And one thing I want to mention about the dirt, and this is a tip that I learned from, oh, Oh my gosh, his name is escaping me. He's such a nice man and his wife have a channel called Live Simple, Live Free. Oh, Bill, Bill and Elizabeth, Live Simple, Live Free. And Bill recommended trying to get your garden soil in bulk if that's possible. And we do have that ability here because it is a lot less expensive than buying the individual bags. I have some individual bags uh, that I got, I believe at Home Depot, of uh, potting soil like for flower pots that I'll be uh, using um, but if I had you bought uh, garden soil to fill all of these beds it would have really been expensive but if you can buy it in bulk and have have it delivered and then just wheelbarrow it and shovel it in it's a really good savings and now one other thing I want to mention if you enjoy gardening and whether from scraps or seeds or whatever the case may be, there are a couple of uh, friends of mine here on YouTube. One I know you, most of you know very well is Heidi over at Rain Country Homestead. She's got some wonderful gardening videos, but my friend Rob has a channel called Ession's Family Garden and it's him and his wife and their two children, two nice boys and uh, he's got a lot of gardening videos and the reason I wanted to let him let you all know about him he lives on the east coast of the United States so a lot of times the things that I'm doing in Central Texas and the time of year I'm doing them are different than what uh, you all might be doing on the east coast so I highly recommend checking out Rob because Rob is a suburban gardener he's got a very big backyard but he's a suburban gardener and he tries all kinds of things and he shares with you the ups and downs, what works, what doesn't, plus he does cooking. <laughs> so you have to check out Rob uh, and I'll, Ession's Family Garden. I'll link to his channel as well. And then for those of you who live south of the equator, <laughs> 
I want to mention uh, Alicia over at Moat Cottage. She's a small scale homesteader and she has a lot of uh, videos about gardening as well. So for those of you in Australia or in that part of the world, she can be a wonderful resource. So this is romaine lettuce and we're going to go ahead and plant this and we're just going to plant it so that we pretty much, uh, you know, cover the part of the original old lettuce and then we'll go ahead and put that in. And when you plant it, you just want to be a little delicate so that you protect the new plant. You don't want to be too, uh, too firm on that, that new growth. Well, Ben is finishing planting the romaine uh, scraps that are going to give us three nice heads of romaine. And then we'll address all the other things that we're going to plant. But I forgot to mention this sweet one. Uh, this is uh, English thyme. And it, you might be wondering, you know, you have to remember this, as I said earlier, was all an herb garden. And some things just seem so happy where they're living, I didn't want to transplant them. So I left the, my thyme right there where it is. I have other thyme but this one is just doing well here, so I left it there. And I just wanted to mention, over here, I've got my chives growing, and they get some beautiful pink flowers on the top. Now, my chives didn't originally grow here, which is funny. They actually grew in the back. There's some behind Ben. <laughs> they somehow started over here, and they seemed very happy, and they're mixed in and growing with this other herb, and gosh, um, is it skull cap or soap? Ben's helping me. Is it skull cap or soap wart? I always get them mixed up. You said skull cap, did I'm I? I'm not sure. <laughs> you know me, I trust you. <laughs> I get. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to look it up again. But this has been here also like the oregano for 30 years, and so I, it's got a beautiful pink flower, and the the chives have kind of moved in, and so I just let them live together, and they live together very happily. Well, we've got our romaine scraps in. Now we're going to put our bok choy and our celery. These two, again, you know, because we are in the summer, but I wanted to show you us putting these in and nursing them along. So we're going to put them in our dappled shade uh, area. Now, if you want, you can, these are on pretty firmly and they've not rotted. So I'm not going to worry about pulling them off and I don't want to damage the new growth that's coming up. Uh, out of the celery here. So I'm just going to pass this to Ben and I'm going to let him put that right in there. This is going to, I think, kind of be more of our shade garden. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, that looks great. And then, you know, we're trying to do what we're trying to do here is sort of square foot gardening. And so we'll go ahead and put in our bok choy. Yeah, just sort of maybe over a little. What do you think? Is that about? We're trying to, <laughs> to measure. I think, think that'll be good. I think that'll Worth be perfect. That? Yeah. Okay, excellent. And that way we'll have um, we'll have everybody kind of have their own square. I think that bok choy is going to come up, going to be nice. I like bok choy. Me too. And it's just so darn tasty. I'm just amazed at how fast yes. everything grew. I mean, one day I see you you know with all these jars and plants and i say oh boy what's what's going on now but then the next it's they, i mean like the garlic the bok choy the lettuce everything just sprouted so quickly didn't it, it really, it really surprised me good job well let me go get some of the other things and we'll continue on with our adventure here now what i've got here is the fennel and we're going to go ahead and put that uh in more or less our bit of dappled shade and that, and oh, I just wanted to show the folks something. Thank you, sweetie. Of course. Now ma you'll see some of this has gotten brown, and some of it I've broken off, but not all of it because some of it is still quite. It's it's it is rotting or degrading a bit, but it's still holding on pretty firmly, and I don't want to damage our new plant that is growing up. So I'll just let that uh, dissolve right by itself in the soil, sort of like a cold composting. Now you can even kind of, you don't even have to bury that too much. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Even here, yeah. Should I put, leave that top yeah, exposed? Yeah, yeah, leave the top okay. exposed. You want to, when you do this one, you want to leave the top exposed. And okay. you'll see, don't worry, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we cover. <laughs> that guys. And then this is the cabbage, uh, which I showed you uh, in the previous video. 
it's got little little nodes here so to speak of the cabbage growing up and it's got a nice root system that has is developing and we're going to go ahead and put that one in right on the end here okay yeah you gotta and be again, careful everything and again up. all you're going to do is just plant where the roots are coming out and you're going to keep all of this uh, right on the top so you don't need a very deep hole perfect Some of my nicest memories with you, Mom, are our adventures in the garden. Oh, I'm so we had a lot glad. of good ones, you know. I'm so glad. Me Getting too. that big tree now that's yes. like towering over us. I know, isn't it amazing? Uh, it's amazing. And it was so cute because Ben, uh, he was a little guy. He was in the car seat. Yeah. Remember? <laughs> and we went to Home Depot and we bought a tree, and because we wanted to get some shade, and we put the tree in the back of the car with it sticking out the window. Remember? Yeah. And we were like, oh my goodness. And I kept going, are you okay? Can you breathe, man? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, no, and so many And you of were these so plants. proud. You were so proud holding on. Remember, you yeah. were holding on yeah. to the tree. It was really cute. Uh, um, but so many of these plants you and I planted. Yeah. So much of everything we've done back here, we did together. It's a good time. It's, it is. It's really nice. And I liked when we got the glider. And, and oh, we, yes. And, and we had it under the tree we this planted. This is so like Florence Nightingale. Yeah, we had seen a movie about <laughs> Florence Nightingale, and we would talk about her all the yeah. time. Anyway, this is the life, Florence Nightingale. <laughs> that yeah, was cute. you're a good mom. God oh, bless you. I'm crazy. Good. You're a good son. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, well, let me get the other things, and we'll talk about putting them in. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plant most of our um, scraps in here. This is kind of going to be our experimental garden area because some of these we have grown before and have had a lot of success. And some of these are going to be a little bit of a new adventure. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and put our leek in. This is going to do very well. As you can see, in water, it's just been doing fantastic and it has a wonderful root system. If you're starting with scraps, I highly recommend leeks or green onions, scallions, whatever you have that, that you're using in a recipe. Um, then put them in water for a couple of weeks and then put them in your garden. These, I would say these are almost foolproof. Yeah. Um, these do really well. So we'll go ahead and plant these. And basically, it's very similar. We're just going to plant them, you know, up to about here. We're going to make sure that the roots are um, nicely covered. And we're going to do the same with the scallion. So we'll put that maybe in our next square there. Right here? Yeah. Perfect. And yeah, just give it a good, a nice, nice hole. Perfect. Perfect. Maybe up a little bit. I think this is going to work out great. Love the way leeks look. Yeah, I Funny do looking plant. It's so tasty. Yeah, they're delicious. I love potato leek soup. Oh, that's the best. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing with our green onion. Right. Yeah, I think that, yeah. Perfect. Oh, that's going to be nice. That's going to come out great. And this will work out great because most of the day it gets dappled sun and then it'll get a little bit uh, full sun at one point in the day to just give it the little boost it needs but not be overwhelmed by our climate. Well, let me go get the rest of the things and we'll talk about those. Now our little onion hasn't had much activity, so I'm not going to put this into the ground yet. I'm going to give it a little more time. I might even just put it in a little pot. Uh, a little flower pot with some potting soil where I can really monitor it and I might get some as I cook and I have some more onion cuttings I might get those going as well but what I am going to go put in is the garlic look at the roots on that thing isn't that amazing and we'll put that over then maybe right over here in Sounds front of good. the um, maybe we can go around this way and yeah, we'll it's put so it over impressive here. how these grew so fast yeah, and so well. That'll be perfect. This is going to be interesting oh, to see. see 
how this all turns out. How fantastic. Yeah, that the root system. Amazing. I am really anxious to see you know, what happens with all of this. And we'll, we'll definitely do a follow-up as these grow and keep you posted on how things turn out. And then now I've got the carrot greens. So we'll go ahead maybe and put this in. Excellent. And you can basically, all you do is just plant that little bit of carrot. I mean, it's really nothing, nothing uh, <laughs> too difficult. Yeah. And you'll get some nice carrot greens. And I just wanted to mention, in case you haven't seen the first video, you can't grow carrots from carrots, at least not that I've learned, but you can grow carrot greens, which are very nutritious. And now we're gonna plant our uh, beet top and we're gonna grow some beet greens. Now we're not gonna grow beets, but we're gonna grow the beet greens, which are very nutritious. And we'll just put that in and it's very similar to planting the carrot. You can't basically just gonna push that um, and put it next to the carrot. Sounds I think that'll good. be a good place for it. You don't even need a shovel. Yeah, and you're just gonna kind of cover up the base a little, but keep the greens exposed and that's gonna be wonderful. Oh, that's going to be great. Oh, I can't wait. I love beet greens. You saute those up with a little olive oil and a little lemon juice out of this world. Just out of this world. Perfect. Excellent. Now, this is the ginger. And really planting ginger is very easy. You basically, uh, as I discussed in the first video, you just can buy a piece of ginger from the grocery store, you know, or if you grow some, even better. And you just want to look for these like little nodes here that are starting to pop out of your ginger. And you're just gonna plant it in the dirt, just straight up like that, with a little bit of the node sticking out. Excellent, thank you, honey. You know, put it right next to the beet greens. What do you think? Sounds good. That's perfect, you lined it up beautifully. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah, I've been impressed by, now I can do this one a little deeper, right? Or should I not? Let, let the nodes okay. be kind of coming out a little bit. Do you, I don't know if you remember. I do, I do was about to mention, yeah. yeah. It's crazy how you, well it grows. You remember when you were a little boy, right? We planted it uh, yeah. right over there, right. and it gets beautiful flowers, and we got a ton of ginger. Yeah. It That's, does, it takes a long time. It takes a long time. But when you get it, yes. you get a ton. Yeah, it does take a long time, and it'll start sprouting greenery, will start coming up, and just be patient, because if you watch any of the folks on uh, YouTube who do a lot of gardening, where they just do gardening, and they have some videos on just growing ginger, and there's one fellow, I'll see if I can find his channel. I can't remember it off the top of my head now, but he grows ginger and he um, uh, grows it in buckets or flower pots. And he was saying that sometimes it can take, what is it like up to nine months yeah, or a long even, time. even longer to get good quality ginger. So that'll, that's a, that'll be interesting to see because I don't really, the last time we did this, I don't 100% remember. How yeah. long, but it took a good long while. It was long a long while. while. Yeah, so I'll be sure to try and find that info for you all. But it's very easy, as you see. You just kind of stick it in and let it do its thing. And it does like some shade. It doesn't like hot, hot sun all the time. Uh, so if you have an area uh, where you're trying to grow some things, and depending what part of the country or world you're in, and you've been struggling with it because maybe there's some shade there, ginger may be the answer. Now I'll talk about planting the potatoes uh, in another video where I talk about how to grow sweet potatoes as well. But basically it's very easy. You're just going to take your cut potato with the eyes and you want to plant it quite deep, at least six inches down. Potatoes do best when they're planted deeply. So that's kind of the little key to know to get a good potato crop. Well, I hope you've enjoyed gardening with me and my sweet son, Ben. And if you'd like to see the first video in this series, be sure to click over here and we'll see you over, over there in, in our, our Texas, Texas Hill Country, Country kitchen. kitchen. Love and God bless.